Hello everybody, in today's video of the San Francisco 2, we start putting all the decking on. Hopefully put some trim on. Maybe even line up our first side planking. So if you want to see that and more, make sure you stay tuned. Hello BSC family and welcome back to my bench. So in today's video, um, we're going to start doing some of the rest of the decking. Uh, I think there's a back piece that has to go on under here. And there's a couple pieces of decking up front here. Scrolling through some of the instructions, one of the decks up here and I think some of this wall here and maybe this wall here. Uh, we're going to start doing some of the finish planking on it. But so far in the last video, uh, we got all these uh, ribs on. And I had forgotten to record this one. But yeah, this one is basically the same thing. You want to keep things at a 90, right? 90 degree. But of course, this one's on an angle. So you got to get a little creative. Now, what I found was I have these really strong neodymium magnets, right? Rare earth magnets. And they're strong so what I did is I took one on each side right I put one right, not even hanging on to it there we go I put one on each side down low about middle middle of it right and uh, so that held there and gave something for this to support against because it sits up against here, but it actually passes through up here. All right, so I put one on each side, and then I took two on the flat this way, all right, kind of like that, so that it held everything actually nice and square. So it might be an idea, if you want to go, uh, you can probably find them on Amazon. I think that's where I got these ones. Um, Probably a good idea to pick some of these up because, man, do they work good. All right. I've got the square ones. I wish I had a few more, but I've got a whole bunch of round ones. Same thing. Real strong. All right. I mean, I put that one down and that one turns. <laughs> right. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Let that cure. We're good to go. So I've got all of these, all of these ones on. Got the front ones on, and then before I went to bed last night, I took some uh, some of the wood glue, and I just smeared it down each joint on both sides, all right? And just let that cure overnight, and this thing is nice and strong, all right? So far, everything looks nice and straight. Uh, there's no twists or warps or anything like that. And uh, we're good to go. So um, holding this thing is going to be interesting because there's no keel. I can't use a keel clamp, right? And that's just a big wide, uh, two pieces of board in a sense or plastic, whatever they make it out of. But it's two and it's just like a, a vise. But you take that and you would put it on either side of the keel, right? I think there's some butterfly screws. I mean, there's different styles, but the one I saw had butterfly screws and you would clamp the keel and then it has like this base that you can swivel, you know, rotate it whatever way. Well, I can't do that with this one. So at some point in time, I'd like to figure out how I'm going to hold this thing uh, because trying to do planking when it's sitting like this and you're trying to rotate it uh, could be interesting. So... That'll be one thing I'm going to be looking into on how I can hold this. Uh, maybe I can make something of my own uh, that just basically clamps, you know, here and here for now. Uh, once the upper decking is on and I get to the point where my planking comes down to the side, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Now, something else is, uh, yes, it comes with a wood base, wood saddle, right? And... I don't know if I want to use that or if I want to get 
set of brass spindles that you would normally put on a ship. In this case, I would have to probably notch out wherever I'm going to put it. So if I put a spindle there and a spindle back here, I would notch it out, get the nut and bolt and epoxy the nut and bolt in or even build it up with wood maybe first on both sides. So when I shape it, then I can drill a hole deep enough down so that I'm not running into the, the bolt when I'm trying to sand. Uh, but yeah, cut that, cut one here, same thing. And then I can just epoxy the nuts in. And if I do that, then I could put the two bolts in, maybe make my own keel clamp. Uh, Cause then I could just hang on to the two bolts, right? So I, I don't know yet. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I got to figure that out before I put all my side planking on. And if you're going to do the same thing, well, um, yeah. Now, if you've done something or come into this situation before and you know a solution to hold this uh, while you're trying to plank it or do anything to it, uh, let me know. Um, I'm up for building whatever. Uh, maybe buying something if it's not too expensive, but I prefer building my own stuff if, if possible. So, uh, aside from that, uh, I'm going to start cutting out the rest of the decking here that's going to go on. So I'm going to need the front ones that go uh, one here and one on this side. You probably can't see that. But anyways, uh, I need the one that's going to go here and I need the one that's going to go here. All right, so we're going to cut those out, and then the next one after that would be this one here that goes all the way back. And from there, I think that's it until the next page. I'm on page 7, so planking doesn't start until page 17. So i got 10 pages to do yet, so let's figure out what we need here. Um, that's not needed right now so what do i need i need one more decking so here we got decking we need number 18 which is this one and we need number 14 which is this one now before we get to cutting this out uh if you're not a subscriber hey please hit subscribe if you like what's going on here hit that like button Thank you to all my subscribers that are subscribed already. Love the support. Love hearing from you. You guys mean a lot to me. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to share the video. Make sure to watch the entire video. doesn't matter who you're watching. It helps out your favorite YouTuber a lot by watching the entire video. Make sure to hit that bell. Make sure to turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Give me a follow on my Instagram and my Facebook group. Links for them are down below. And if you want to help out with any of these types of projects, uh, you can donate to the channel. Uh, and the best way to help out is down below. You can find the link for my PayPal me, or you can go to my Teespring store and check out the merch that I have there. Hats, shirts, stickers, male or female. I haven't gotten into the kids stuff yet, but if there is a demand for it, I will start making some kids stuff. And if you want a shop card at all, or a sticker, one of these, um, hit me up with my email down below and uh, send me your information. I'll send you out a card. Also, if you ever want to send me anything, just email me and I'll send you out my address. Or even if you just want to chat. I love hearing from everybody. So with all that, let's get to cutting this stuff out. <laughs> got all this stuff sanded uh, I decided to cut this one out as well uh, this one's gonna end up back here somewhere and now I got these two here now these two this one here is gonna go up front here you always want to test fit everything 
before you glue just in case you have to adjust or modify anything nothing is perfect everything seems to fit tight fits good across there fits loose enough in the holes that you're not fighting with it fairly flush there a little bit over there but that's okay that can be adjusted afterwards same thing here we're a little bit past so we can adjust that after and this one's a little past and so is that one so we can adjust all that afterwards now this one we're sitting down flat against the uh the keel piece here we're sitting on this one and we're sitting fairly flat against this. We're going to have to squeeze it in just a little bit right there to make sure everything sits tight. Now, by doing that, it will open up this one a little bit. But this one has space that uh, we can actually push this one in a bit too. So we're good there. So while we're at it, I'm going to test fit this one. Now, this one here does have a bit of a twist to it. which should be fine but that's why we're going to test fit right now it'll lock into there and should fit in those two holes right there right one there one there and then you got four on top here that we're going to have to fit in those ones aren't too bad and there and there we get this one set in there we go like that so i think with a, a few elastics right and elastics i just got a bag of them from the dollar store right so if you break them big deal they weren't expensive uh you can go and spend bigger uh more money on the better elastics or maybe wider ones or anything but yeah so a couple of elastics i think i'll suck that down just nice now, if we suck that down, I may have to put something in the center here for the elastics to push on because I got a bit of a gap in the back there. But nothing too major. So I think we're good. Um, we're going to start with this front one. See, again, this is where it would be nice to have, you know, a keel clamp. But we'll make do for now. So I'll take that one off. We're going to take this one off. Now again, we're going to take our wood glue, just standard ordinary wood glue. Now remember, on, on here, you don't want to put glue here on the, the ends. You don't want glue there because they're going to stick through, so you don't want to make a mess. And same thing with this one, we put glue across here. You don't want to put glue on the top because they're just going to stick through, right? Again, we put them through the holes. Same thing on top here. We put them through the holes. Now I do have some glue squish out. Everything is tight. That is good. So again, go get yourself from the dollar store. You know, two bucks from the dollar store. A whole bunch of cotton swabs. Now again, you can do this with a damp rag if you want. But I like to clean up. I know you're not going to see under here. And it's not going to matter if the glue squeezes out. But I want it clean especially around this spot here where we're going to do some planking later. Make sure you clean up underneath. You don't want to be fighting a, a glue drip later on when you're trying to do your finished planking. And I know that there's uh, uh, some reinforcement blocks that have to go in at some point, and I'm not quite sure where they are. So again, if you clean everything up, and you happen to have to put something in here for reinforcement well you don't have a glue drip holding you back or trying to get in there later to uh put glue in right or to flatten it out i should say so here we're going to do the same thing again you know, glue on this edge
there we go so we're going to let this dry up uh, i've got the front one on or both front ones i've got the back one on uh makeshift clamps right don't have any uh squeeze clamps so a couple of elastics overstretch them with a couple of jars of paint putting pressure on just in that center area you know and uh, if you want you can always put a couple more elastics in there and make it a little little more stronger but everything seems to be sitting tight underneath and uh yeah we're good to go so i'm gonna let that dry up i'm gonna check the instructions and see what's next uh, i think we've got a little bit of sanding to do first and then uh, we're gonna go from there so i'll be back in a minute okay everybody um so uh this is all cured up i've got the elastics off jars of paint gone blah 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 now um I went out to dad's shop and I found myself a couple pieces of wood that he had kind of thrown out. They're just scrap pieces of wood. This one here is pretty much a one inch square, I think it is. Yeah, about three quarter. Either way, uh, it's nice and square though. Now I sanded it so that it's nice and smooth and flat. Same thing here is just a three quarter by half kind of thing, small piece. Wrap some sandpaper around them and staple them down this one's got 320 this one's got uh, 180 i believe it is or 80 80 grit and uh i've got another one here for later uh i gotta sand it a little bit more but uh, this one here will be good for you know shaping on the sides this one here is good like little spots you know if you have to get into little spots you know under here uh, this one here, it's on course. I want to wrap some uh, 320 on this side, you know, so I can use this one as well, and then turn it around, use the finer one. But again, same thing, get it in there. It's nice and square, you know, fits in between. You don't want anything too, too big, right? And then, of course, I still got, like, little pieces of uh, sandpaper here that I can still do by hand. So I've started on the sanding itself. Now I needed to bring this spot down here. These here were too high. So I needed to bring it down. So I started off with the 80, you know, and it just sanded slowly. Take your time, keep measuring. Uh, try not to hit anything. I hit this little nub here a little bit. So it's tapered off a bit, not a big deal. Uh, I've also started, you know, like went all the way around, making sure that all of these are sitting where they need to be. On the side ones here, it's not so big of a deal. I used the 80 grit um, anywhere that was on the outside where planking would be, right? Uh, up front here, same thing. Now, i got still got a little bit more to do, but I started on this side. I started beveling this a little bit. Now, I know I'm going to have to do more once I start doing the planking, right? I'll have to contour this more, but I knew it was going to have to go down a bit because I had to get past this one. It was sticking past here a bit, and it was sticking up like this one over top. So I beveled that a little bit. And this was the same thing on this edge here and a little bit here. The rest of them seem to be okay. This one was a little high. Still got to do this one a little bit. And I still got this one because it is sitting, you know, high up. And I got to do this one. So I'm going to sand that one and sand this one. Uh, then I went along with the 320 and i cleaned up any of these edges here where we're going to do some final planking and this edge here you know make sure now the glue is out i touched this one up a little bit with the smoother one and uh pretty much it all back here a little bit too this one here is going to get some finished planking over top of that as well so i'm going to uh finish off sanding this now this here um should i record it for you yeah I'll, I'll record this little bit here it's just this piece and this piece here so uh i'll turn down the sound again you know and uh, probably play some music while i sound this one for you but uh just to show you what i'm doing you know all i'm doing is beveling this back and forth both of them until i meet with this one you don't want to sand on this too much <clears throat> on the, the keel portion but you want to make it flat with it you know so that it bevels in and i'll try to zoom in on this one here 
And you see how this one comes up, right? And then it bevels a little bit. Same thing with this one. See if I can get a better angle here for you. Hey, do you see how this one's beveled here? And it's flush with this one. But on the other side, it's sticking up. That's what we're getting rid of. Okay. So I'm going to get this, uh, this little bit here done. And then uh, we're going to get on to, uh, I don't know. Oh, there's the, uh, the bulkhead that's going to go here. And a top piece. So we'll get to that. Um, that's part of the reason why I sanded this. And uh, I did some flush sanding and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to sand this one out here. So I'm going to leave it like that <clears throat> just because I don't want to bevel it too far and find out that it's screwed up. And once I start doing the planking, we start shaping this, then we can sand it some more, you know, because that one will probably need some. And then back here, we'll need a bunch, you know, so because this one starts tapering in. And then we've got this big curve here, right? So it's going to be interesting going from an outside round to an inside round. So that'll, that'll take some work. This one here will be a little interesting. So now with that sanded, what we're going to do is I'm going to find this piece and this piece. And we're going to get that put on. So according to the instructions, I need number 15 and I need number 17. So on here, we've got number 15. And it looks like we actually have number 17 as well. So here's 15. Here's 17 right here. So we get these cut out. I'm going to move some sanding sticks here. Keep knocking over my glue and everything else here. Always try to keep your work area clean so you're not fumbling with things. And uh, also, I've done it myself and I'm sure if you few others have and if your work area is not clean you got stuff sitting all over the place right what happens you go to grab that and you just stabbed yourself with a knife right you try to keep your area clean or even in some cases pencil and, and the, the uh, knife are the same color so what if you go to grab your pencil but you accidentally grab your knife right Try to keep your work area clean. It's just a good habit to have no matter what. It makes your workflow better. Okay, so now actually that we've got these pieces, we're going to send these little nubs off, just like the rest of them. Now this is the thinner stuff, so I'm just going to use the 320 here real quick. Okay, that little little bit uh, a small area gets right in there okay the test fits pretty good now what i see in here i don't know if you can see that or not you see the gap up top there's a gap up top here, All right? See that? You see the gap there? And there's a gap down here. Well, there's not much we can do about this gap down here because we're locked in to a spot right here, right? Both sides. There's not much we can do about that. But this gap on top is because of this piece right here, All right? It's actually sitting up higher than the uh, than this rail here. It's sitting up higher. So what we're going to have to do is we can start off by beveling it by hand because this is going to be on a bevel. 
right? If you're going to match this angle here, right? So we're going to bevel this one off a little bit at a time and keep test fitting until this piece sits flat on top of here, okay? We are getting very, very close, and I'm sorry, you probably didn't see a damn thing I did. Sorry about that. Anyways, we're getting very, very close. All right. So all I'm doing is beveling this on a bit of an angle. All right. And I'm bringing it down to match the height of this rail here. I'm still just slightly up. I'm still catching it. And keep going until that's gone. And there we are tight down. Okay. We're nice and tight down there. So now we can actually glue all this together. Okay. So with this one here, I am going to try and see if I can clamp this down a little bit. Because the deck is bowed out just a little bit. So the deck, it was bowed just a little bit. So now that we've got that in there, that'll bring the deck up tight to that bulkhead. Get rid of the excess glue. Like so. So we're going to let that cure for a few minutes. And then I'm going to put this one on. And uh, we'll get that glued down. And then we're going to move on to probably page 9. So I'm going to let that. I'll do this off camera. And come back and we'll go to the next step. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Alrighty then. So. We've got both the uh, bulkhead here and we've got the back put on. That's all glued up. Now I'm going to sand this off a bit because the wall comes up on an angle. And then with this angle and it being square, well the wall comes up and then there's an edge that turns. So I want to take this edge and make it flush and flat with this wall, right? And on the same plane. So I'm going to do that. Uh, that shouldn't be very hard, but uh, page 9, we are going to need uh, step 13, we need part 23 and part 22, all right? Down here, we've got part 23 and part 22, so let's cut those out here real quick. So this is coming along pretty nicely so far. Let me know what you think of this ship. If you haven't seen part one yet or the unboxing, I'll put part one up here in the corner for you, for you guys. Okay. Uh, you can go check that out after or beforehand to see how we got this and then come back and finish watching this one. But let me know what you think of it so far. Let me know what you think of my idea of turning this into a pirate ship. So we got those. We're going to leave that for now. Um, also, let's see, 14 is putting that together. 15. We got to bulk out up front here. Now, they're showing me some pieces here. We're going to be putting a piece here. All right? You see that? We need to put a piece here. We're going to put a piece here and a piece here on both sides. So, we're going to make this thicker all the way across. Okay? That will probably help with planking. Um, probably reinforce it a little bit. There's probably some other stuff that it's needed for. So we're going to grab those parts as well so that we've got them. <clears throat> and on here is where we're going to find them. So we got part 19, 20, and 21. There's two of each. And again, these are not numbered. Neither are these, but these are quite specific. So, but uh, these here, I mean, they're easy enough to identify what you're trying to do so 
We're going to get these cut out as well. Okay, so um, that's it for this piece here. Now, I'm not going to throw this away until I'm done, just in case I need to fix something or whatever. I've got various sizes and thicknesses of pieces, different curves. So if I needed to fix something, I've got these shapes, right? I can either trace it out or cut it right out of this and sand it all down. So I'm going to keep this for now, okay? So now the next thing to do, of course, is more sanding, right? So we're going to get these sanded up, and uh, then we're going to start fitting them in. Like I said, these here will go down somewhere in here. And right off the bat, they're too tight. Now they can be put in. Maybe after just a, a quick touch of sanding, let them slide in and out easier. So again, we're going to test fit everything. This one goes in nice. And this one, obviously, can go in nice. But we'll double check to make sure everything's flush on the ends. Okay, so I'm going to get these sanded up, and then I'll be right back. We'll start gluing this stuff together. Okay, everybody. So I'm back here. I've got all this stuff sanded. And, uh, you know... Everything's looking good so far. Still a little tight fit, so but we can work with that. It's not pushing anything out of the way. I may have to trim them a little bit, but I'd rather have it a little snug. Now you are going to have to shape these after. You're going to have to round them off this way and make sure they're flat this way. They're sticking up a little bit here, you know. But everything is looking pretty good. Now again, this is where a good set of magnets will come in handy. If they will let go. Just like that. So a good set of magnets, you can... Hold these down, put a couple more on there to give you a little more clamping force. And the same thing for the next ones. All right, take this one, this one. Like that. Good to go, right? Let them glue, let them dry. Now, let me show you something that I found. Now, I don't know if you can see back here. Let me zoom you in. Right up here. See that notch? Okay. Not a big deal. You looked at this. This goes there. And there's a hole there. Right? Okay. Again, not a big deal. But it lead me, because, you know, I, I know the picture, but there's a, I'm not sure what it's called, but uh, basically there's a, a mast or whatever you want to call it coming out. And it's like the supports for the back mast right so this goes there like so okay so obviously rod goes in there glues into the notch so i thought you know what just to make sure that it actually lines up it's not going to stay there get one of these out here the appropriate size all right got the appropriate size out fits in the hole no problem. You guys probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. So anyways, this fits up in here. This one fits in the bottom. Like so. All right. And this, a chunk of this, will sit in that hole. Well, I tried putting it in, and it's at the wrong angle. All right? Because the hole is square to this piece right so the, the rod's going to try and go in through that hole and it won't fit in there i would actually have to move this that much for it to reach in okay so that tells me and if you look at this piece look how far away it is 
All right. So what that tells me is in this piece, that's square in there, all right? We need it to, we got to go like that, okay? So we're going to take a needle nose, or not a needle nose, but magnets are a pain at times. We're going to take a needle file and we're going to change that angle, okay? We're going to keep change, it's, uh, filing in there until we get the proper angle that we need. So that this will sit in here at the right angle without it binding up. A little bit more. Now that'll slide right in there, no problem. So make sure if you build this kit, you're going to have to keep uh, an eye on that and make sure that yours fits properly. Okay, so now that we've got that adjusted, um, now I'm going to glue all this stuff up. And again, you've seen that done many times already. So I'm going to glue this up. I'm going to glue these, the front ones up. And uh, I'll come back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. That piece is now done. So uh, that's all nice and dry. Now I've gone along uh, off camera and I've sanded every surface uh, just to give it a bit of bite for when we start doing the uh, finished planking because I know this one's going to get done uh, back here things like that I've flattened out this edge here so that there nothing is sticking out past where it's supposed to be uh, double checked all of the joint pieces I've also gone along and made sure that none of these are sticking out where they're not supposed to be all the way along same thing with all these front edges. I've sanded all of this all the way along. Same thing with over here. Done all of these ones all the way around. All right. And I've done this one. I've done some slight pre-shaping. So I've tapered them off so that they match this angle and this angle. And make sure that these aren't sticking up. I think this one needs a little bit more on this side here. I looked at it from the side it seems a little higher on that side anyway so that's all done these are all glued in everything is done with the transom and stuff like that so on to page 10 now page 10 let me move you guys here page 10 we're getting into doing the uh, the dark wood uh, planking, right? The thin, real thin planking. So we're going to have to do all of this along this edge, and then we'll end up doing the top side of it all the way around, all right? So that's what we're going to work on next, all right? Okay. Right, so to do that, obviously we need our thin planks or finished planking right it's going to be the dark ones so I pulled these out uh, pull the elastics off now I'm going to start using this wood or wood glue here right you can see what I'm doing this here is that uh, that wood glue that is uh, stainable right just so that if anything comes out the standard wood glue or super glue you cannot stain. You try to stain something and it's just going to repel right off of it, right? So you don't want that. So you want the stuff that's going to be able to absorb stain, take stain, things like that. So I'm going to start using this. And I'm also going to use uh, a little cup. I've got my water here. You know, and I'm going to use an older brush probably, but I've got some extra ones here that are brand new. And... Uh, I'll brush it on gently, you know, so I'm not making a mess anywhere. We'll get those glued on, and then we'll have to take a brand new sharp um, X-Acto blade, and we'll have to trim off the top and the bottom so that you're only left with this edge, okay? So I'm going to get a few things here. I got my wood. So I'm only going to take one off just so I can 
easily get to it and not have them all over the place. I'm going to pull one out here. Now, again, I've never done any of this, so if you know an easier or better way, please let me know. Now, I don't know if this would be easier and less wasteful if I try to cut this down the center, make a smaller piece so I'm not wasting so much. Uh, I mean, I'm only working with the, what, 30 seconds kind of thing. So, I don't need anything this wide. So, I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to grab my big ruler and a new blade. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm just looking for my new blade. <clears throat> so, we're going to change out this blade here. Put a new one in. Now, I've also had one of these. You don't need it. You can use the exact blade. But I have one of these here. These are like an anvil chop, right? got a big razor blade here and uh, yeah we can cut these to length again so we're not wasting stuff but also you can change your angles right safety keep it close <clears throat> now I went ahead and I marked uh, roughly center on both ends so that I can put my ruler on here like so Cut this, just light, light cuts. You don't want to try and cut through all the way in one shot like that. I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea. Yeah, not perfect, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to put that aside. Now that we have this, we've got a broken spot here. That we can use that for a different area. And I am wider than the whole thing, so... Okay, I lost that. Wait a minute, I'll find it. Okay, well, there we go. Now, let's see if this will actually work. We want this, we want this. Okay, so what I've done is I've left the factory edge down and my cut edge up because I'll have to trim it some more. I've left a little bit extra on both ends, and I've made sure that the bottom edge is flush with the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to let that cure up. Uh, but while that's curing up, what I'll do is I'll do this one, and this one. By the time I'm done those, this might be good enough where I can trim my ends off, and then I can do this side and this side. Now, once we got those done, we got them trimmed off after they're completely dry. Then we can come along with a full wide strip and do the top. All right. Now it'll be the same thing. We got to do this edge and then the top. And then we got to do this edge and the top. And uh, from there, I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to uh, get a couple more of these done and then we'll come back and I'll do the top ones. Once I've shown you how to do that, well then, off camera, I will do this one and this one, and we'll go from there. dry for a little bit and then uh, we'll come back we'll trim off everything that needs to be trimmed and then uh, we'll start on the top piece and then off camera I'll do the rest of them so uh, yeah give me a few minutes and I'll be back okay everybody well guess what this is all nice and dry now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off 
these little excesses here and then we're going to trim off to the proper height carefully cut this we're going to give that a quick little sand to make sure it's flush Now, when you're cutting this, the best way is to push into it <clears throat> so that uh, you don't end up pulling it off. And same thing when sanding, push into the edge, like into the, to the face of it. This way you don't pull it off. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to take another piece. Now, we're going to start going all the way around on the top. We're going to make it flush to the, to the edges. All right. We're going to have a piece there. One this way, one this way. Okay. And then we're going to do this one here, this one here. So I'm going to glue those down cut them up and glue them down and uh, once I've got that done I'll come back and I'll show you okay ladies and gentlemen now as you see here I've got all my little pieces cut now instead of just doing a complete butt joint like they wanted right like this you know in these spots they wanted like butt joint type thing you know I didn't like that so i decided that using my cutter you know i can switch you know from 45 whatever degree angle i want and uh, i decided to put 45 degree cuts on the sun uh, on my joints now all i got to do is glue them all into place and then i'll do uh these back ones over here all right I got this one to do and this one to do and those are just straight cuts so I'm going to glue them down in the same process and uh, get those all situated and then we can just fine-tune with some sanding or trimming along the edges you know and trim off the ends here all right as you probably can't see me pointing but yeah we'll trim off these ends here and we'll trim along the edges make sure that everything's nice and neat and tight and uh, we'll go from there now i think the next thing to be doing is let's see here we'll go back yep that piece that piece and that so yeah once we got those then we're going to start doing the decking on this one so that'll be interesting enough so when i come back um yeah i'll have this one done that done that done and we're going to start getting into the planking for on this deck here. And that's going to be fairly straightforward. So give me a few minutes. I'll glue these down and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. So I've got all this trimmed. All these uh, the dark walnut or whatever you want to call it. And uh, got these back ones on. Got them all trimmed and sanded. Everything's nice and smooth now. Okay. And it looks so much better with the 45s in there. Looks good. Looks good. So now the next thing that we're going to be moving on to is putting the planking on the top here. Uh, that's the first one they say to start with. So um, they said to mark center line and then you're going to work your way out on both of them, which is fine and all. So I did that. So I got myself a small little ruler and, uh, you know, I just started at one end found my measurement divided by two marked the center and i went and did the whole ship just so that it's done so now we're going to start taking the pine planking or whatever color you want to call it and we're going to start gluing all of these down and we're going to follow this line okay so this is what we're going to be doing so we're going to follow this line we're going to glue those down you know and we're just going to work our way out on both sides and uh, we'll trim out this hole here and then i'm assuming the next page is probably going to tell me to continue on 
Yeah, pretty much. You gotta continue on, do the entire deck all the way across. And also, they tell you to mark out your plank joints and mark them out and your nail holes. So, we'll start off by doing this deck like they want us to. Uh, they don't show us actually doing all the decks. Just basically, they show doing this one. And then the next picture or next couple pictures is all of them already done. So, we got this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one to do. So we're going to get to doing that, and uh, I'll probably put you on a time lapse for that. So uh, let me get a few things out. We'll get some stuff set up, and uh, I'll get a time lapse going for you. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we got the planks out. Uh, so what we're going to do is just push it up tight against the back here. We're going to follow our line. All right, we're going to keep that down flat. And then we're just going to mark it right across here. All right, now I think the best way is going to be the, the, the little blade here. Like so I'm just going to cut that and we're going to put it down. Now it's got a little bit of a bow. I mean, you can sand it or trim it or whatever. I'm going to trim it. I mean, you could also, or not trim it, but I'm going to sand mine. I'm trying to keep it as square as possible. It's not going to take much to get that out of there. Still have a little bit of bow. Now there is planking that's going to go on the back here. So you could probably have just a tiny little bit of gap there. I wouldn't want to go too much. The, those planks aren't very thick at all. So I'm not sure why it doesn't seem to be going down. Well, like I said, this is my first time doing this, so there might be an easier way to do this. If there is, let me know. You know, um, if you've done stuff like this before, am I just making things harder for myself or, or what? No play. Now we can glue that down. And again, I'm going to use uh, this glue here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hey, hit that subscribe button. If you're liking what's going on here, please hit the like button. Hit that bell button. Make sure that all notifications are turned on. Give me a follow on my Instagram and my Facebook group. I just posted a picture of uh, this here, of some of it going on. So, hey, give me a follow. And if you are subscribed, hey, thanks a lot. It means a lot to me. But, yes, I'm using... The, the Pro Bond Max, uh, it is waterproof, it is sandable, and it is also stainable. Just in case some of the glue does happen to seep up, regular wood glue, super glue, anything like that is not going to accept stain. So if you're going to stain any of this, uh, you're going to have this bright white spot that's not going to take stain. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, i got to get a clean cup here. But that's the way it's going to happen. So you're just going to apply glue. Um, and start working your way across and you should do both sides at the same time so whatever you do here do one over here you know do this one do this one do this one do this one you know back and forth so once i get this deck glued down uh, maybe even the rest of it if i come across something that i think you guys should know um, i'll pop back in and let you know so enjoy the music I'm going to do some time lapse. So, kind of ran into an issue here. Now, I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, if you're supposed to use them. 
Good thing I caught it before I used it. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. Here, let me zoom right in for you. Can you see that? There's three different sizes of planks, right? So far, I've been using that middle one, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out all of those planks and I'm going to find or sort them, I guess, and maybe do a little bit of research uh, to see if we just randomly use them. But I mean, what would happen if I use this one here and then say this one on the next side, right? It's, you're going to eventually end up being an oddball board in there. So I don't want that to happen. Um, it's okay if you, if you're supposed to use them all, then I guess it would be okay if you put one here and one here and then a wide one and then, you know, to vary the widths of the board. But I want to see if these ones are for something else somewhere. Just to clarify, because all it says on the instructions is these boards are part number 25. I can't find anywhere that says part 25, right? Like even on this sheet here, you know, it's got all the, the board or like the parts, but it doesn't have anything about the planking. Okay. So I'm going to check the disc and see if there's something on the disc that isn't showing up in the PDFs. And then, uh, yeah, once I get that figured out, if there's no major issue or whatever, I will continue planking and then uh, I'll come back. I'll show you what it looks like. So I'll see you in a few. Okay, everybody. So my findings. Now this is completely my fault. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, make sure to check everything that's on the discs. Okay. Or the instructions or whatever you, uh, your kit comes with. Okay. I didn't check everything. Maybe I was over excited to get this build going or whatever but i found this on the disc and it says parts list okay so if we scroll down you know it says plywood barn blah 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 whatever then it starts getting into all the different parts <clears throat> which is good it tells you what each one the number is on them and how many there is of each one all right now we get into this one here and this one shows me that there is 170 pieces of the dark wood this one here and they are 0.5 thick 5 mil wide 300 millimeter long then right below it it says there is 42 pieces of 0.5 thick four millimeter wide, 300 millimeter long. Number 25, the ones that I'm supposed to be using for the deck, okay? And luckily enough, I was actually using those ones when I started. So we lucked out on that. Now we go a little further here. We've got 140 pieces of the two by five, which are still in here, which I will sort out later. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. It's all thick stuff. Uh, three pieces of, or two pieces of three by four, 18 pieces of 0.5 by five, 300, number 31. So I've got these ones marked, okay? And these are a little wider than the planks for the deck. Then we've got two by two, 10 pieces, uh, two by three, 10, uh, 12 pieces. Then we come down here, we got some more thick ones, thick ones. Um, some solid ones. What do we got here? Some one by three. Some more there. And then we get to this one, which is 0.5 by three by 300. There's 12 of them. And that's these really small ones. Number 94. Okay. So now that I've got all of them marked out and I've kind of gone through the rest of the stuff, you know, the rings, I still got to go through a bunch of it. You know, all the hard stuff like the thick stuff and the dowels and 
all of that there. You know, the blocks, I'm not too worried. Pretty hard to get them mixed up. And then you get the sails. So yes, lesson learned. Go through your parts list. So it's a good thing I didn't just randomly grab the wrong one. Um, I actually ended up starting with the right one. So we're good. So now I'm going to continue on with the proper size, which luckily I said we had. And we're going to go from there. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, I'm not sure how much time I've got running here, but I will uh, check that out. And when I come back, we'll either do more or I'll close out the video. So I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, everyone. <clears throat> Guess what? It's only been roughly three and a half days, give or take. But I've got all the deck done. Every one of them. On top of that, I've got all my uh, planking joints done on everything. And I've got all the nail work done on everything. Now, let me zoom in here for you. See if you can see this a little better. Yeah. See all the nail work? Now that's on everything all the way to the edge I got all the edges nailed down right even up on up here I got nail work done up on here this deck is done all around the uh, the holes for the masts this deck is done and this one is done right so everything is done up to this point anyways um now the next step is going to be covering these end walls on all of them all right even this one back here so i've got them all marked out I don't know if you can see that there i got it all marked out so the first line is just the uh the actual board and then they want you to measure up from the top of the board up four millimeters because it's going to end up looking like siding. Okay, if you look at the site, uh, siding on a house, it's got like a, a step kind of thing. So it comes down and an in. Comes down on a bit of an angle, in. Comes down on a bit of an angle. So that is what's going to happen on all of this. Okay, on all these walls. So I've got them all marked out. Uh, I kind of put a couple pieces up here just to see how things were going to go. I got one here and one here, but I still got to do everything. So in the next video, um, I'm going to be doing that. Now, also in the next video, <clears throat> I'm hoping uh, they're calling for this to start. Now, this here is the whole complete side like this. All right. So I have both sides to do. But um, it's coming to the point now that I think I'm going to have to start staining some of this. Like once these end walls are all done, I think I got to stain all of this. Now I've got uh, I'm gonna try one way here. Now this stuff says you can actually use it to stain wood. I got it from the dollar store. It is basically a clothing dye. Now I've got a dark brown and I've got a black. So I'm going to find a few pieces of samples of wood um, and mix some of this stuff up and try to uh, stain the wood and see what it does. Okay, so that's all it is. Just a fabric dye and it's a powder. Um, yeah, so I got the dark brown, I got black, so we're going to try it. I got a couple containers here. All right, so that'll be in the next video and uh, we'll see how that works get these if it works then we'll get these things done and we'll stain this right um what i'm hoping is maybe the dark brown see how dark it is um if it's not dark enough maybe add a bit of black to it and keep darkening it and we'll go from there i guess so that's all that done uh something else i'm gonna have to do 
maybe within the next video or something. Maybe I'll make a video of just mixing up this dye, doing some test stuff, uh, just a few other little things. Um, things like I, I've got to figure out about LED lighting. Am I putting any in? Uh, there's a lantern that goes on the very back up here, right? Goes up here, but it hangs off the back side here, right? So I got to think of that. Am I going to do it? It is metal, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work yet. And then running the wires, uh, the grating in the floors, you know, um, am I going to try to put lighting in there? That's all stuff I got to figure out before I start closing up the sides. Because once I got these big side pieces on, uh, it's not long after that that I'm going to start doing the first layer of planking. So it's, it's things like that you got to figure out before you get too far, right? So if you're liking this stuff, hit that thumbs up for me. You know, hit that like button. And uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And to all the subscribers, Thank you very much. It means a lot to me that you are subscribed and supporting the channel. Hit that bell button and make sure that all notifications are turned on so you don't miss out on anything. Also, give me a follow on my Instagram and my Facebook group. Links for them are down in the description. If you want to help out the channel in any way, you can check out my PayPal me link down in the description. And I also have a link for the Teespring store where you can pick yourself up some merch like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, hoodies. Um, I think I've got some hats in there, stickers, coffee cups. There's all kinds of stuff, and I'm always adding more. So once again, if you're not subscribed, hey, please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. And no matter what you're doing, take your time with it and always try your best. Don't impress anybody else. Just build it for you. And until next time, later.